Hello and welcome to your module 4 feedback. We want to talk about what happened in module 4. So here we go. Discussions. Number one, do them. Okay, there are a couple of discussion uh, posts that are just missing from some students. You need to do the discussion posts because I use them to evaluate your progress on SLO 1, 2, and 3 starting this uh, topic. So it's really important that you do those posts. If you don't do them, you get a failing evaluation for that SLO that's going to pull your SLO grade down quite a bit. Now, let's talk about that just a little bit. What do I mean by SLO evaluation and SLO points? Remember, there are no grades. I'm evaluating you whether you're exceeding my expectations on SLO 1, which in this case is to employ terminology correctly. Uh, whether you're exceeding expectations, meeting expectations, partially meet expectation, needs improvement, or failing. That is 543210 points in that order. Actually, no, 43210 points in that order. Exceeding is four, meeting is three, partially meeting is two, needs improvement is one, failing is zero. Okay? So if you don't do a discussion post, you get a zero for the evaluation on that SLO. SLO2 is style specific observations in your discussion posts, especially if you hear something that you know is related to the style period of that module, mention it. Mention this is a, a facet of the romantic period, which is module five, or uh, mention the, the, the larger orchestration, uh, the larger forces involved, the larger symphony. There's more players on the stage, especially if you can relate that to what you've heard in prior periods. The, consider the very small chamber orchestras of the Baroque period, the slightly larger symphonic orchestras of the classical period, and the massive forces that you will often hear in the Romantic period. Those are style-specific observations that you can make that will make me go, ha-ha, you are learning how to differentiate your style periods. And when you propose a plausible composer, you make your case, right? It's like you're prosecuting an individual and you're saying, I believe that this individual wrote this piece. You have to give your evidence. You just can't go in and accuse. You need to accuse and build a case. So you build a case by saying what it is you hear in the piece and drawing comparisons to other pieces that you know, drawing comparisons to other style periods. And that's generally what you do. You make a case for a style period and that helps you narrow down which composers are possible or which composers are plausible. Now we're gonna be practicing this for the rest of the course. So make sure you're doing your discussion posts so that you get the opportunity to be evaluated on these three SLOs. In listening quizzes, this time it was purely a bonus opportunity to help you kind of get into the groove of proposing a plausible composer. In the next few quizzes, I'm actually going to be evaluating SLO3. And remember, it doesn't matter if you get it right. I don't care if you name the composer perfectly. What I want to see is that you're listening to the piece, you're identifying things in it, you're drawing comparisons to other style periods, you're trying to listen in such a way that you place the piece in a style period. Is this Baroque? Is this classical? Is this romantic? All right. Name the things that make you think that it might be classical. And after you think that it might be class classical, name the composers of the classical period that we've studied. Name a piece that sounds similar. Draw some specific analogies or specific comparisons. And then say at the end, therefore, I think the person who wrote this piece is Johann Sebastian Bach or something to that effect. Um, you're doing a pretty good job. Make sure you're describing what you hear. A lot of times, sometimes what I read in the discussion post makes it seem like you're remembering what the book said about a piece. Now it's important to know what the book said about the piece and to recognize it in the music. That's why we do those connect listening assignments. But make sure, especially if it's a piece that we haven't covered, you're saying what you hear, not what a Google search of the piece says you hear, okay? And uh, again, just really hone in on the style period. Compare what you're hearing to either a style period that we're discussing or a style period that you know about. So SLO points. I have, let me show you, 
I have turned on the Learning Mastery Gradebook. Now this is just showing it for the test student, and so it's not the best example, but it will show you SLO 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and it will show you the alignments for which you have been scored. So these are all the possible places where you can get scoring for SLO 2 and what you have gotten so far. And don't trust this number too much because I found that it's not accurate. So what I've done is in the traditional gradebook, which is under this tab, Assignments, if you'll scroll all the way to the bottom, I have exported the, S, the uh, Learning Mastery Gradebook and I put in your current points as they're calculated there. Okay, so for SLO 1, you got 3.5. That is an excellent score. That means you're getting mostly threes and fours on using the correct terminology. Anything three and above is an excellent score. If you get three for all five of these, you're getting an A. That's 15 points, I believe, is an A. All right. It may be a B, 15 points may be a B, I'd, I'd have to check. But um, I round these up to the nearest quarter of a point. So 3.52 would actually round up to 3.75. 2.57 would round up to 2.75. Three would not round anywhere, it'd just stay a three. 3.2 would round up to 3.25. Now, this SLO4 is your artifacts. So if you're not doing your artifacts, uh, well, you won't see a score here yet, because remember, this is the one place where you're kind of trying to accumulate points, because the more artifacts you submit, the more points you get for your ePortfolio project, and that's how I'm evaluating SLO4. So make sure if you haven't done those artifacts, you go ahead and jump in and do those artifacts. Okay, quizzes. Again, some of you aren't doing the quizzes. You need to do the quizzes. It's how I evaluate your SLOs. Don't worry about the auto grade grade you get for the style period quiz right after you take it. I go back, I look at the responses, and I adjust as necessary. Make sure you read the question more carefully and respond to all prompts. That's doubly so for the listening quiz. Read the prompt. Several of you did not respond to a specific portion of the prompt in the listening quiz where I asked for a specific point in the form that was happening. You gave your general impression of the piece and that's not what I asked. Read the prompt and watch the lectures. I know it is extremely difficult for a new listener to be able to focus on form. So in the lecture, I gave you the answers. Don't believe me? Well, let me show you. Here's where we were discussing Beethoven. Here's the big build. That moment there was the recapitulation. That's a really exciting moment. We hear that first theme come back in C minor, and it's like, oh, we've come back to it. Uh, it's, it's great, recapitulation there. Let's hear that moment again. We're coming out of the development. Here comes a big build. Here it is. I want you to recognize that moment. Recognize the moment of recapitulation in symphony number no. five, first movement. Recapitulation. We come out of the development, a big build, and we hear the opening theme again. That is the recapitulation. Let's listen to a little. I don't know how I can be more clear. All right, that's exactly what I'm looking for for that question. And that's the part of the symphony that I put in there that I said, what part of the form are you hearing here? Okay. So if you're not watching the lectures, you might ought to watch the lectures. I give you a lot of answers. Okay. All right. Personal learning projects. I got your projects in. They look like great projects. If you haven't submitted, again, you got to submit the assignments. Basically, the only people who don't get great grades in my music appreciation course are those who fail to complete certain assignments. 
This was an assignment, a refinement of your, your proposal into a plan. If you haven't done it, go back and submit it. If you didn't do your initial proposal, go back into module three and do that proposal. I'll grade it. You need the evaluation of your proposal and you need the evaluation of your plan. I have made comments for those of you that submitted your plans. Um, in a couple of occasions, I may have asked you to really uh, narrow your project down to a specific, to, to more specifics. Remember, I'm not asking for even a term paper. This is a four to five hour investigation uh, and put it in some kind of presentation so we know what you learned, okay? This is, uh, some of the proposals are so vast and so large, they would literally require a multiple year dissertation to get them done. So I've given you some suggestions. If yours is one of those overly broad topics to narrow it down and some suggestions on how to narrow it down. So make sure you're reading that. That is it. Um, for this module four feedback. And uh, I hope you enjoy module five. It's one of my favorite modules, music of the romantic period. It's a very popular period in music. Most people love romantic music. So I hope you enjoy it. All right, I look forward to your discussion posts. Everyone's gonna do them on uh, module five and uh, get to listening those pieces so that you can knock out the listening quiz and make sure you're working on the style period also. Remember, I give you some, some guidelines in the listening list details and in the style period uh, study guides. Make sure you're making use of those. All right, that's it for this, excuse me. That's it for this feedback and I look forward to seeing you online. Bye-bye.